Welcome to Basketball U. If you're new to Basketball U, make sure you slam dunk that subscribe button. And just to make sure you don't miss a thing, make sure you tap that notification bell right after you hit that subscribe button. Basketball U, Basketball U, what it do, what it do. If you have already subscribed, welcome back. If you are new, you know what to do. That big subscribe red button over there, push it. And then be sure to set your post notifications to all so you do not miss out on anything and all things basketball you here on youtube and if you'd like to see more of basketball you you can go and check out our social medias be sure to follow those too twitter instagram even facebook hmm but today let's talk about this role player when we think of the best power forwards in the national basketball association a few names come to mind carl malone charles barkley kevin garnett tim duncan and a whole lot more. But one man could have been the greatest power forward in the history of the NBA. Basketball U family. That man is Derek Coleman. When Derek Coleman was drafted, he went to a young team that didn't offer much veteran leadership. So instead of any real guidance, Coleman was thrown into the deep end and expected to turn a failing franchise into a winner all by himself. Just as what was expected from DeMarcus Cousins during his tenure with the Sacramento Kings. When asked about any regrets during his NBA career, Coleman said, one of the things I would have changed being drafted in New Jersey and being the number one pick going to a struggling team. And I thought the biggest challenge for me was that I never had a mentor there that would take me under his wing and teach me the ropes. And then you're like the face of a franchise to be pushed out there. You're on this plank by yourself and you're supposed to save a franchise that hadn't been to the playoffs in probably seven or eight years. I wish I would have just had a mentor there with me to tell me, hey, Derek, don't say this. Say it this way. Do this. Do that. I don't have that. When you look up the name Derek Coleman, the name comes with a lot of negative energy based around his troubles off the court with being arrested multiple times. But we want to highlight the energetic, dominant player that DC was. Coleman was more than just a rebounder. He was an excellent ball handler for a man his size and possessed a nice perimeter shot, particularly in the era when big men did not shoot from the outside. He was a dominating defensive presence with quick feet and an imitating blocker. He was able to run the court well and because of his ball handling, he was often used to help bring the ball up the court against full court press defenses. Coleman's scoring numbers are relatively low for a man of his ability, in part because he was an excellent team player and in part because he shared the court with phenomenal scorers such as Douglas, Owens, Sakely, and Thompson. Even with all that, when he left Syracuse, he held the Syracuse all-time scoring record. Coleman came to Syracuse from Detroit as a skinny kid with a lot of potential. The legendary Dave Bing had mentored him during his high school days, helping DC develop and eventually guiding him to Syracuse. Coleman's freshman year was an eventful one. The expectations of the team were low, and yet the right mixture of talent was on the team. The team started out 15-0, Ran through the Big East, winning the regular season title, but losing the Big East Finals to Georgetown. Coleman would win the Big East Rookie of the Year honors. Then the team pulled the Miraculous and made a phenomenal run through the NCAA tournament, 
reaching the championship game for the first time in school history. In the championship game, Coleman had an outstanding evening, pulling down 19 rebounds, an NCAA freshman tournament record. Unfortunately for Syracuse and Coleman, he missed the front end of a one and one free throw with about 30 seconds to go that would have sealed the victory for the Orangemen. Instead, watching Keith Smart hitting the game-winning jumper with five seconds to go. Coleman stayed at Syracuse for all four years, helping the team to a school record of 114 wins during that era against only 30 losses. Along the way, the team would start his sophomore year as the number one ranked team in the country and won the Big East Championship. As a junior, he moved to the center position, replacing Sakely, and played the position well. As a senior, Coleman would achieve a triple-double against C.W. Post and would be named the Big East Player of the Year and would make first team All-American. Coleman would be the NCAA's all-time rebounding leader when he graduated, later eclipsed by Tim Duncan in 1997. Overall, while at Syracuse, he would be named to the Big East All-Conference first team three times after making the third team as a freshman. Coleman was the number one overall pick in the 1990 NBA Draft after a successful college career. He had a solid rookie season and went on to win the NBA Rookie of the Year award and, of course, All-Rookie Team in 1991. Coleman went on to improve during the 1991-1992 season, averaging close to 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. The Nets were an up-and-coming team as well, with young players like Coleman, Kenny Anderson, Chris Morris, and Mookie Baylock, teaming up with solid veteran players like Sam Bowie, Chris Dudley, Terry Mills, and Drazen Petrovic. The addition of coach Chuck Daly, who won two NBA championships with the Detroit Pistons as head coach, was enough to get the Nets a winning record and into the playoffs during the 1992-1993 season. Coleman averaged a solid 20 points and 11 rebounds a game, which was a point production improvement from the last two seasons. His production was good enough to get him a bid for a third-team All-NBA. Derek Coleman was making a name for himself in the league as a young, rising star. The 1993-1994 season was the peak for Coleman and the Nets during his time with the team. The Nets made it to the playoffs for the third straight season. While Coleman averaged his second straight 20 points, 10 rebounds season, and was selected to represent the Nets in the All-Star game along with teammate Kenny Anderson. He played for the U.S. national team in the 1994 FIBA World Championship, winning the gold medal. During a 1995 game featuring Coleman's Nets and rival Karl Malone's Utah Jazz, Coleman controversially referred to Malone as an Uncle Tom. Coleman's career ended during the 2004-2005 season when he was cut by the Pistons during the season. He was one of nine NBA players that faced suspension for his role in the infamous November 2004 Pacers-Pistons brawl. Coleman is one of only three players in NBA history to record a 5x5 in a game with at least 20 points and 10 rebounds, the other two being Hakeem Olajuwon and Draymond Green. Throughout Coleman's career, he averaged 16.5 points per game and 9.3 rebounds per game. And for being able to take a team to the playoffs after a seven or eight year drought, is very magnificent if you ask me. Coleman was a role player with a stat sheet that showcases his rare performances. This is Basketball U. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, follow all of our social medias 
right there in the description to keep yourself up to date as this channel will have a lot of basketball a lot of players and a lot of training and more information on how to play the game of basketball remember someone's always working are you you you